Hi, I'm Eric Dewey from the Socially Awkward Studios, Science and Beer, and Her Majesty's Secret Podcast. And you're listening to another proud presentation of the Four Eyed Radio Network. Check out more shows at foureyedradio.com. It's your good pal, Steve-O, from the 4i Radio Network. I'm here to talk to you about a wonderful designer we all know, uh, Revenge Lover. Illustrates and designs that fit your personality. For samples and inquiries, please visit revengelover.com. And just do yourself a favor and tell them Steve-O sent you. I know it really doesn't count for anything, but, I mean, come on. Who's gonna, who are you going to trust? You got to trust, trust somebody else? No, you're going to trust me, Steve-O. Because, face it, I'm awesome. Warning. The following is intended for mature audiences. It includes references to the use of illicit substances as well as crude humor. Listener discretion is advised. Now, before we get started today, there's something that I wanted to talk about. Um, there is an individual, there's a, there's a pocket audience that we're not tapping into, mm-hmm. and uh, that is a one, Shane Garcia. Yes. Um, so I just wanted to say, in no uncertain terms, this one's for the Shanes. Cowabunga America! I'm Zach Nanimous. I'm Johnny Dim. And you've just tuned into the Warpod, part of the Space City Nerd Network, the Four Eyed Radio Network, Musings of a Geek, and the Houston Nerd Casting Collective. Tonight on the Warpod, we are going to be talking about Prometheus 2. Another network the Warlocks are joining. Which I already mentioned. You did, but we're going to talk about it a little more. Ultimate Chicken Horse. Why Zach is a streaming fuddy duddy. Star Wars. Uh, and announcing a release date of a release date. And, and, Michael B. Jordan is the new Chris Evans. So first, I'd like to talk about our new network. Yes! It's our new network. Like you mentioned, it's called Musings of a Geek. Um, to be honest, we don't know a lot about them, but they do things a little differently. They're, um, uh, what, uh, there's a word for it, um, anti-Semitic. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, I didn't know that. Learned something today. You should probably research the people that you that you get in bed with. No, nah, no. <laughs> Any exposure is good exposure. No, they're a fine, they're a fine <laughs> network, and uh, we're uh, we're very grateful to be on board. Yeah, and we're grateful for all the networks that allow us to be on board, um, and because they've all been really cool, um, and, I, and I, it's good for our audiences. I'm glad that uh, we're getting more listeners. So this might be somebody, somebody's first episode. This will be somebody's first episode listening to us. I hope that one of you is named Shane. In fact, I would like every Shane that listens to this podcast today, because this isn't just for Shane Garcia. This is for all Shanes. Right. Every Shane that listens to this show, I'd like you to tweet at us. Yeah, it, Shane, this, is, this one's for you. And I'm, uh, taking, I'm, I'm talking to all of you. We're going we're gonna to call it uh, Stephen King's The Shaning. The Shaning? Yes. All right. Yeah, uh, this is the Warpod Shaning edition. Um that's really all I got. I just wanted to at least talk, to, uh, say you know how cool they are for letting us join, and um, we'll talk about them further uh, once we um, build more of a relationship. We learn more about them. We can talk about them more um, and kind of support them because they're supporting us. We should go on like a really cheap date. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. Can we go bowling? No, oh. <laughs> I love that idea. I'm thinking a PB and J picnic. No, that sounds. Oh, that's this, that both are cheap. Bowling is not Come on, that cheap. Of a geek. Let's go. Let's go bowling. Yeah, it'll be a geek fest, bowl fest. That's weird <laughs> that I said that. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, that is an odd thing to say. Yeah, I never really thought about it. Yeah. Okay, um, but yes, thank you once again. Um, there was another thing that I wanted to talk about today. I learned this today. Mm-hmm. Um, so Ridley Scott uh, of Metroid fame. Yes. No. No, it's not right. <laughs> I, I'll agree with anything you say. <laughs> Rid, Ridley is a character in Metroid and was inspired by Ridley Scott. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
Not that. Uh, is, is Ridley Scott a uh, skeletal pterodactyl? I don't know. Well, either way, that's what he is in the game. Okay. Um, either way, uh, he is planning a Prometheus 2. Now, the only reason that I mentioned this is because I assumed you knew something about Prometheus 1. I've seen it. Okay, and you've seen the alien. You've seen the alien movies. That serve no, as the, as not the really. Sequels. No. Wait, what? Those are the sequels. I thought so. No, that's not how it works. Oh, so Prometheus is the sequel. Are they connected in any way? Yes. Except that they're just. Are they really in the same universe? Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah, I think that Prometheus serves as the as the prequel to the alien movies. I believe it, but I they don't exactly. they don't mention it or link them in any way in, in the Prometheus movie. Except that they. They go to locations that were in the they went, Alien movies. They went to one location. So yeah, it's, well yeah. If if I uh, if I have a, a sci-fi movie and they go to the Death Star, then we can we can assume that it's somehow intrinsically linked to Star Wars. I'm confused. I don't think I don't. I'm, I'm hardly believing this is a thing. It's very much a thing <laughs> because that, I I mean I, maybe it's because <clears throat> of my lack of knowledge of the Alien movies before. Um, okay, well, shortly because... after the events of Ghostbusters, Dana Barrett, um, <laughs> she, uh, she goes into space uh-huh. um, with the sidekick from Quantum Leap. Oh, God. And um, they, they, have an, they have an adventure in space, and uh, the Hobbit turns uh-huh. out to be a robot, uh-huh. and he's got white blood, uh-huh. and he's got a really creepy scene. Okay. And then... He, um, and then there's, there's a xenomorph, uh-huh. and the xenomorph is the perfect organism, uh, because it's got acid blood. Okay. And, uh, then, uh, she kills it with a piece of industrial equipment. Nice. Yeah. Now, I'm familiar with the industrial equipment. The power loader. Yeah. I'm familiar with that thing, because there was a, um... Toy, I'm guessing. No. <laughs> actually, I don't think you're doing that. You're going to guess this reference. Um, I actually was more familiar with it because, um... The very last boss fight, the last fight in the game of Conker's Bad Fur Day, is a ripoff of that fight scene. Doesn't surprise me in the least. Yeah. So. Okay, so Prometheus 1. Yeah. Tell me all about it, because I don't know anything about it. Okay, see, it, it, it's it's basically a never before, like, it's like a, a voyage mission, first of its kind to go this far into space and they're thinking that they can somehow figure out or or um, learn about the origins of man. Uh, so what happens is this guy that everyone thinks is dead, this old rich guy, uh, fakes his death, makes it onto the spaceship. Spoilers, by the way. Um, and and that's um, is that Rowan Atkinson? No, not Rowan Atkinson. I don't remember the actors. Loki. I don't remember. Okay. The aliens are. Are giants okay? Um, Is Tom Edelson giant? No. Okay. I don't think. Anyway, they get to the end of the movie and they don't realize that the uh, alien could possibly be aggressive, and he ends up trying to kill them. Everything yet? They're trying to figure out stuff. Science. I don't know. Explain to me this because I have seen the end of the movie. Um, the lady in the shorty shorts who does, uh, uh, who does a surgery on herself. Uh-huh. Um, at the end of the movie, there is a big tower running, or there's a big tower falling, and she's running from it. That's true. That happens. Okay. And she's, she's running at a, uh, perpendicular line. Uh-huh. Away from it. Why didn't she go left or right? Um... Space does weird things to your mind and makes you think... I don't know. I can't think of even one thing that she went through that day that was in the least bit stressful. <laughs> um, I don't know. I remember I remember not being 100% sold on the movie. Really? Uh, yeah. It was okay. Um, it seems like there's a lesson that the aliens are trying to teach. And I remember a lot of people being confused by the movie. Um, and I think when they released it on Blu-ray, which is where I watch it, I own it on DVD, or Blu-ray, and... Um, I think it was uh, the, the aliens, they added scenes when they brought it to Blu-ray. And I think the aliens, are, they're all about... Um, they're all about that space. About that space. No Xenos. <laughs> yes, that's exactly it. So, um, you're not excited about Prometheus 2? Not really. Okay. Well, you're going to catch some flack for that. Okay. What did you have for us today? Um, 
Okay. I'm going to start off with one that I, I really got a kick out of. Um, this might be a short segment, but I, I think this is hilarious. Okay. So now I got this, this a headline. It's a headline on GameSpot right now. And it's a main main deal. And and it says Final Fantasy fifteen launch date to be announced in March. <laughs> so we have a we have uh, an announce we have an, we have a release date of a release date. Yes. Yes. And I think that's absolutely hilarious to me. I mean and that March is a while from now. It's it's a number of months. Well, in that time, they'll get a significant amount of work done that will inform them of how much time it will take them to finish it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I I just love that. I I got a big kick out of that. It's, uh, I mean, it's kind of indicative, like, everything. Like, okay, it was something that I was thinking about uh, earlier today because I was going to talk a little bit about um, Marvel Civil War. Yes. Um, But I didn't get a chance to because... um, like all the stuff, all the stuff that I wanted to look up was dated, and it was all leaked. And so by this point, Disney had already had the chance to like take everything down. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of like your big spoilers are all leaked, right? You know, it's kind of like those. Uh, it's kind of like uh, don't mess with the Zohan, where all of the uh, all the shops are called going out of business and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Like it's not relevant. You don't feel like you're getting a sneak peek, right? Unless somebody leaked it to you. Right. So everything is like weird meta information. You only know this because you're on the you're on the cutting room floor. You know, like sneak peeks are a big thing now. Uh, Star Wars released a new uh, a new sneak peek that's three seconds long. That got posted to my Facebook wall. It's a little longer than that, but not by much. It's like two, ten seconds. Two lightsabers. Yeah, that's extend. about it. That yeah. That's the highlights. Which by the um. By the way, that was the some, highlight sabers. That that is that is him. Thank you. <laughs> that is something that we talked about on the show, but yeah, um, we talked about in the let's play, but isn't going to, um, you know, nobody's going to see that for a while. So it's something I kind of want to talk about, and um, that is the showdown between Kylo Ren and Finn, played by John Boyega. Hashtag Black Stormtrooper. Is that his name, Finn? Yes, Finn. Okay. Um, yeah, um... Finn the Human? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> that episode of Adventure Time is going to be great. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But, no, um... One thing about... One thing that struck me, um... Ab- uh, about this, uh, about this scene, and actually a friend, uh... In friend of mine, um... Shout out to Corporal Punishment. Um, we were talking about how they... Like, we know Kylo Ren's not a Sith, we, and Finn doesn't seem to be a Jedi. Right. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't look that way, you right. know? Um, would you agree with that? Yeah, I think, I think, yes, I want to agree with that. Okay. Because I feel like it would be too easy to make him a Jedi. And I think that J.J. Abrams um, won't go with the obvious. I don't think. Uh, that's we, that's my that's my base judgment of it. Um, we like to hope not, right? Um, and I like what we were talking. We talked about it uh, on our one of our Master Chief Collection videos that we we're putting out. It's going to be like episode forty. So yeah, we'll see you in a couple of months. It happened, I do know what happens during Halo Two. We know that. Mm-hmm. So, but we had some uh, conversations on there about stuff like this, and and yeah, I like the idea of uh, the idea of. A character not necessarily being a Jedi wielding a lightsaber or a Sith. Mm-hmm. I think that's very cool, and and I, I'm, it's kind of I've always thought that was weird uh, when uh, and just all the other Star Wars movies that have come out, and that's never been a thing. The only other person we've seen wield a lightsaber that wasn't a Sith or a Jedi was a robot. That's the only one so far. Yes. Yeah. Well, okay. <sighs> there are a couple of there are a couple of things at play. Um, when when George Lucas was first describing or like giving acting or giving direction to Mark Hamill when he was wielding the lightsaber, you know, he was, you know, kind of like he was like fencing with it and stuff like that. You know, it's a laser sword. You know, the logic is that this is a weightless thing. Right. But um, George Lucas asked him to pretend that there was a tremendous 
power coming out of this thing, that there was something about it that was unwieldy. Okay. Um, so that, plus in a Star Wars Saga Edition role-playing game, you have to take an exotic weapon proficiency to use the thing. Right. So these two things lend themselves to the idea that it's possible for anybody to use one, but it's not simple. Right. Um, I think Captain Jay wanted to say something. Light foils, which were um, invented... Before lightsabers, there were eight, uh, non-force users were able to use them. Yes. Well, non-force users can use lightsabers, but they're still exotic. I'm just And like an example of... Uh, an example but of... I thought that Jedi's had to use the force to help control like the crystal. Like you needed but... to be more force savvy with the new, the newer lightsabers than before. Uh, I mean, I'm not certain about that. The precedent in the movies that Han Solo um, cut open a Tauntaun with one, so clearly it's it we're capable of holding them. Right. And General Grievous did too. It just might be the like, combat wasn't he aspect. Force sensitive? No. Oh. He stu- he said he had, that he did he have he had, did he have some he had some bionic components right? General General yeah. Grievous. Yeah. Uh, I think I think he may have had like a fake foot. I thought he had like a heart. I thought they had shown that at some point. I mean, in the movies? Yeah. When, you say, bi- when yeah. you say bionic, what do you mean? No, no, I'm sorry, not bionic. Uh, bio, bio, biological. biological. Okay. <laughs> Completely my mistake. Sorry. Did he have some robot parts? <laughs> he feel like he had there? a robot part. Yeah, was there, yeah. <laughs> there's a little metal in there. Uh, he had a, um, he appeared to have a heart, uh, spinal cord, um, eyes, and a brain. Okay. Okay. Um... But yeah, and for those of you who maybe don't play tabletops, an example of a um, uh, of an exotic weapon would be like nunchucks. They're usable, but it's something that you have to practice with. Right. Yeah. And in, in, in uh, D&D Fifth, they kind of address that with you. You either get a proficiency bonus in something, or you don't. Mm-hmm. And it's all about your class and what you're used to. Um, so, so fighters, of course, are more are more proficient in. Um, a wide variety of things because they're fighters and they've you're you're expected to have seen these weapons before. Where monks get the more specialized stuff, right. such as nunchucks, sai, uh, quarterstaff. Mm-hmm. Well, er- anybody can use a quarterstaff. Anybody can use a quarterstaff, but generally it's not used. Um, I think they well they use them better. We'll say that. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so if it turns out that Finn and Kylo Ren are not force users. Are you excited about this concept? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm very excited about it. Uh, I think it sets a new precedent for the movies and um, could be very interesting uh, going forward into episodes uh, 8 and 9 as well. <laughs> I was just thinking about something because, like, the cinematic universe, if you're accepting it as canon, like, mm-hmm. it, it, like that, the whole, the whole cinematic universe is canon. Um, even that sets up Force users to still be juggernauts yes. compared to normal people. Absolutely. And so I think there's there's room for Episode 8 to be like, Episode 8, one Jedi showed up. That'd be cool. And No, and like that's the name of the movie because everybody's got to fight one Jedi because everybody's normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and, and, and it's almost... It, we know... We know... Not because anybody told us, but because it's obvious that they're rebuilding the Empire. Oh, the First Order. Yeah. 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 (laughs) (laughs) Um, So, they're rebuilding the Empire. They're rebuilding... um, And and, and the the Rebels were... They're they're kind of still building. I mean, they're still... They still, I would assume, they weren't nearly as uh, a big of a force at the end of Episode 6. Because they were still the Rebels. They're supposed to be the smaller force anyway. So, they're building up. So they're both kind of... It's almost like a, a, a race. This takes 30 years. It's 30, 30 years have passed. Building an empire or building a, a, a worthy uh, thing like that in the galaxy, I would imagine, would take at least 30 years. Mm, I don't know. All right. Um, well, it's like, you know, they have um, they, they have just way huger numbers they probably have, like, whole resource planets where it's like, oh, we get our tritanium from this right. planet and we're slowly eating the whole thing away, but nobody lives there, so, you know, screw them. Right. Um, and on top of that, um, manufacturing is 
crazy in that era because you have uh, robot manufacturing, force, fi um, uh, force fields, reinforced uh, production models, and things like that. I don't think it would take that long. Okay. I, really, I really don't. All right. It'd be kind of, it's kind of like, um, I'd say it's once, uh, at least one or maybe two steps backward from um, Star Trek manufacturing, which is like instantaneous. And anybody who has insight into the economics of Star Wars, they're welcome to uh, inform <laughs> us exactly how that's, that is played out. Um, but yeah, I, I think, yeah, that's all I got on that subject. Well, actually, I've got a lot more on Star Wars if you want to skip up to it. Like what? Um, well, um, there's actually a new game coming out, um, called, uh, Star Wars Uprising from Kabam Games. Kabam! And, um, not, not too much is known about the game. It's, uh, it's been said that it is a dungeon-crawling RPG, which I'm excited about, especially in the Star Wars universe. In the Star Wars universe? Yeah. Uh, tabletop? No, it's a video, video game. game. Yeah. On PC. what, on what, on what PC, system? I believe. PC? Yeah. Kind of like Diablo 3. Top and down? Oh. Or Mo Sires, right? Okay, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm assuming. Yeah, that, and, and then also there's, a uh, um, uh, what was the, uh, the, the Dungeons and Dragons uh, game that was so popular in the... Dungeons and Dragons. No, God. I, should, I shouldn't have said anything. I completely forgot what it was called. Um, the thing is, I don't know anything about the gameplay. The gameplay is taking a back seat to the fact that um, this game is all about these four custom factions that are coming together. And that's not even what, are, what, what I want to talk about. One thing that the, uh, the article that I read mentioned was that um, now that the expanded universe has been tossed out... Um, it's giving uh, it's giving Star Wars creators freedom to basically rebuild that canon, mm -hmm. and I think that this could lead to canon glut. Canon glut. Yeah, uh, like DC had for a long time. Okay. What, what do you What do you mean by glut? What do you mean like is it going to be uh, too much of it or not enough? There's going to be too much intersecting and parallel and just, you know, you're going to have your art fan fiction where yeah. uh, Luke Skywalker and Chewbacca start like a, a pop band and stuff like that. It's just, they they get to go wild and it's it, it means that this is the first example of an independent, of an independent creator saying, okay, s my Star Wars is this, which is exactly what happened to DC. Right, but but they're, but but Disney is licensing these people to use Star Wars, and so yeah, so it's in Disney's hands. They need to be picky about who they give licenses to. The thing is, it's not a bad idea. Okay, but it's the tip of what I think is going to grow into a very large iceberg. Right. Okay. Is this a bad thing? Uh, well, are you are you saying it's a bad thing that they've started doing this, or is it a bad thing that that it could that your uh, the 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 future you're you're afraid of is going to happen. Yes. So you're, you're asking if that is a bad thing. Yes. Um, I don't think there's something drastic would have to happen to harm Star Wars as as a property. Oh well, no. The thing the thing about it being in any financial strife. No, that's not what I meant. Off the table. That's not what I meant. I meant as an idea, as as a product, as a a thing that that we're fans of. Um, for for me to say, oh man, Star Wars, no, I don't. I mean, right now, you already know I'm not a huge Star Wars fan. Mm. Um, but uh, I think I think that's good. I think that ultimately that could be good for Star Wars. It's almost like they've hit the reset button anyway. So yeah, I I think that it could be good. I'm afraid of. <laughs> I, I'm I'm literally afraid of. There being so many continuities, and like there being so many overlapping, intersecting, and contradicting stories, that eventually Star Wars is going to have to have their own Infinity War. Go for it! That sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> A Star Wars version of Infinity War. <laughs> but I think I think that that is one thing that could actually be damning. You think so? Oh, be, well, it's like um, you know. They uh, they just did um, Marvel just did C uh, Secret Wars three, and uh, you know I've been uh, I've been reading that, and 
one th- one thing that I noticed, and it was something that you know I kind of made a excuse for early on in my mind while I was reading it. I was like, well, this is their story where they are condensing the universe back down to one, just like uh, DC did mm-hmm. in uh, Infinite Crisis, right? And I was like, oh well, by necessity, it's going to be a similar story, and so. If they're following the same comic booky path of having all of these, uh, uh, all of these continuums, all of these ideas that fit into separate canons, then they're going to have to start having similar contrived stories, especially crossover stuff uh-huh. like uh, count, uh, Countdown to Infinite Fets. <laughs> <laughs> Where, Fett versus Fett versus Fett. Where all the Boba Fetts meet. And this one's a good guy. This one was a Jedi. This one was Sonic the Hedgehog. This one's a girl. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm that's down. bad. I, yeah, I'm just saying that'd be interesting. <laughs> this one's five years old. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I'm what? Not, I'm not going to make that I know. I know exactly what you were thinking. I'm just saying they're different. Different ages. You know, all types of different uh, Fetts. That'd be interesting. Well, it's like when you're in, when you're in sci-fi... You know, and you make the jump to making uh, to uh, to gender switching a girl. Yeah. Then the obvious route, not the appropriate route, but the obvious route is to make them a sex symbol. And like this one's a sex symbol. This one's a child. You, you need you need a buffer character in between. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. This one's this one's a sex symbol. This one's a Wookie. Right. This one's oh bad example. <laughs> <laughs> I the characters just keep getting sexier is what's mm-hmm. happening. Uh. <laughs> Don't judge. <laughs> Either way. Um but yeah, that that would that would be my only apprehension. As far as the actual people are concerned, um actually no, we'll we'll come back to Michael B. Jordan because you have because I don't know what you have on your list. Yeah, well, you heard what I said earlier about when I introduced it. Um, I want to talk about why you're such a fuddy-duddy when it comes to streaming. Streaming's weird. But how is it... Okay, well, let's let's define what we do, right? So we do the podcast. Mm-hmm. We also do our version of Let's Plays, which are called War, war Games. Mm-hmm. The difference between the War Games and a streaming episode... is the ability to edit. Yes, that's the only difference. And the fact that it gets introed, and it comes in smaller doses. But you've done live performing before. Mm-hmm. So, have you grown... Have you, do you not like that anymore? Live performing happens in little vignettes. Yeah. Where you have a beginning, a middle, and an end about every five minutes. Uh-huh. So, it's actually a show within a show within a show. Right. Whereas streaming... Streaming could, could be that. Streaming is just a lot of... I'm holding a controller now, America. Ooh. Something blew up. But why can't Ooh. but why can't you do that? Something blew up. But 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 we do. What, what, why is why would you not want to just do what we do when we yeah. do the recordings? When we do the let's plays, the war games, just do that, but a live version. Because you don't get the opportunity for little vignettes. What do you mean? Well, like when when we do uh, when we do the war games. Like, uh, about every 20 to 25 minutes, we stop ourselves, we give everybody a breather, and then we come back and say hi again. Yeah, yeah, but we only break it up because of the way we believe our audience wants to view those. Yeah. But if our, but it, we, just, we, just, we just tweak it, and we make the, the episode longer, which we have no problem doing. We, we sit down for hours and do these things anyway. And let's say you're doing an hour and a half of streaming. That doesn't seem like that big of a difference to me. It's a very big difference. Okay. But the whole in- the whole energy of the show is different. Um, what you're ta- um, what you're talking about and how you get to segue uh, changes completely. In in twitching, um, there, there's no there's no break. Streaming. So, uh, so everything's a segue. Right. You know. And so there's like there's like this pressure to talk about one thing. That you okay, let's get on. let's get to right down to brass ca- brass tacks. Okay, Zach, are you scared of streaming? Not at all. You sound scared. I'm not scared of anything. I think I think you might be chicken. Nobody calls me ultimate chicken horse. <laughs> Was that your segue? <laughs> sure. <laughs> we'll go with it. Um, ultimate chicken horse is actually a, a game. That came out. Um, well, it didn't come out of PAX, but it's one of the uh, it's one of the things that's getting a lot of attention at the PAX uh, indie 
place. There's a big... Uh, oh, indie convention area? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ultimate Chicken Horse is a is a game where you and a... Uh, you and a friend... Uh-huh. Um, you actually create a platforming... A, a side-scrolling platforming level together. Okay. Like, you... Uh, you copy and paste elements from a toolbox, and the idea is um, you need to kill your friend... And survive the. Uh, you need to kill your friend and survive the level, because you don't get any points if you don't survive the level. Okay. So it has to be possible but tricky. Okay. And I think that's a really interesting way uh, to uh, to do that. Now, how do you? In what in what media are you doing this? PC, I guess. Okay, so it's actually a game that exists. Yeah, you have to play it. Okay, that sounds fun. I'd do that. I think it's a really. Uh, it, it it's it's stuck out to me. Because um, it's so, it reinforces the um, the ideas of plausibility in game creation. Usually, when um, a community gets an opportunity to create side-scrolling platforming games, there's a lot of incentive, or there's a tendency at least, to make it impossible. Uh huh. And like, like what Mario Maker will become. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this one, you actually have to be able to get through it. Yeah. Which, that's that that's that's just brilliant to me. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds great. What's the thing that you would want to see in a platforming game to try and kill your friends? This, actually, this is funny. This triggers a, mem- a memory. Um, I used to play this game in, um, I think you've done it in junior high mostly. With, uh, Odds and evens. No, I remember this game. No, 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 no. Marlin, Marlin, and I. I think it was Marlin. What we would do is we would have just a piece of paper in front of us, right, or in, like in a spiral, or whatever a page open, and we would draw. I think it started out with us drawing just stick figures of each other, like we just do stick figures, and then we would. Um, we draw, draw no, no, I think it was just one of us. Like, oh, this is you, and then I'd have like, like for example, then I draw an anvil on his head. And Over his head. They would draw the genitalia on the stick figures and post a deviant art. Yeah. And so we put the, the like an anvil that's going to fall on his head. And then he would draw something that counters that so that he stays alive. And we keep drawing, taking turns drawing things back and forth. And it reminded me of that because it's very similar. That's really interesting. Yeah. I didn't know you were an artist. Not really. Safety. Yeah. <laughs> but I like the idea. But to answer your question... um. What would be the best thing to kill my friends with, in general? Then I could put it, you know. Then I'll put that in the game. So I gotta answer that question first. Mm-hmm. What would I like to kill my friends with? Love. Shame. Shame. Mm-hmm. So you are going to. And it rhymes with shame, which is what this episode is dedicated to. So. This one's for the shames. Yep. <laughs> the shaney shames. Uh, so you would copy paste their uh, internet browsing history. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can we do that? I want to do that. Right now? Yeah. You can copy paste my internet browsing history. It's squeaky clean. I'm of course it animus. is. Of course it is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I am not going to get into yours. <laughs> That's probably safe. <laughs> um, what would you put in the game to kill your friends? Um, I think I would want, like... Turtles? Captain Baby. Captain Baby. Captain Baby. Would Captain Baby have powers? You don't know what Captain Baby is? I don't know what Captain Baby is. Um, so there was a uh, side-scrolling walk-around beat-em-up uh, called Captain Commando, mm-hmm. which featured... Uh, there, there were all sorts of uh, captains, and Captain Commando was the most powerful one, or he was, the, he was the main character, and then there was Captain Ninja, and like there was Captain Robot, and one of them was Captain Baby. Uh-huh. And Captain Baby was just a baby in a big mech suit. And you went around punching bad guys. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I'd want Captain Baby. Yeah, that's the best stuff of mech I've ever heard. Really? Yeah. Do you think they put a baby in that uh, that fight they're going to have, the big robot fight they're going to have with Japan? You heard about this? No. Uh, there's a company that made a giant robot. Like a mech well, robot. How big? Uh, it looked, if, I, if I remember correctly, it was about... I would say... Five to six times my height. My height? No, probably less than that. So it would probably be like 12 to 15 feet high. 
Okay. Um, so kind of like a power loader. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But more armor. Yeah, and a little bit bigger, if I remember correctly. Just a little bit. Okay. Um... But anyway, yeah, so so they built this railbot, and then they, they were doing videos about it shooting stuff and whatever, and they just built it by hand, or built it from scratch. And they challenged, since Ro- Japan makes so many other robots, and they've been doing this for a little while, uh, they called out Japan, and they challenged Japan to a giant robot fight. And this is happening now. When? I don't. I think it's they, they scheduled a year in advance, that way they can have time to improve the robots and make them battle-worthy. So they've fixed... The problem with vehicular motion. No, what do you mean? These robots walk on feet? Yes. Uh, I think the one they originally had built, I don't remember if it had legs or if it had... I think it, I think it had tracks. It almost invariably has tracks. Yeah, I think it did. But I, Japan's been making, making walking robots. Yeah, and she sucks. Right, because they're off balance. Well, the thing is, is like... As soon as they get hit with something, they're going to fall over. Yeah. And it's not even about, like, weight distribution. It's the fact that our brain is much more advanced than we give it credit for. And any time we're walking around, we're making all of these micro-adjustments, not only in our ankles, but all over our body. Right. We're actually playing a balancing act. Which is, at this point in our technology um, advancement, it's hard to recreate that in a robot. Yeah. Yeah. And and they they are doing some. I remember there's some balancing uh, mechanics that they're having. Basically, what's you need to check out this video, and uh, hopefully I'll just find the link and attach it to the links below. But I watched the video of them kind of promoting this, and uh, I think they might be doing a crowdfunding campaign. I don't remember if they're not or if they are or not. But what they do show in the video is like the five different teams they're bringing together to help improve the robot, the USA. Excuse me, the, the American robot. That of course being. Uh, T Rex, Pterodactyl, Smilodon, Mastodon, and Triceratops. Of, of course, but in addition to that, um, they're also bringing a guy from NASA um, who, did, <laughs> who, who did all the um, the robotics and all... one guy to do the science. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he has to control. He to, he's the head of that team. <laughs> right, no Pterodactyl, no, um, uh, no. But he's he's doing all the robotics. Like, so he's bringing because he's a robotics expert. And he did all the uh, all the Mars uh, rover stuff. Mm. Um, and they also bring uh, a team. Uh, oh, well, they're bringing a guy from from Hollywood who's who's specialized in. Um, I think he does paint jobs. Tell me something, like with, they. No, 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 no. This guy just specializes in like. Um, I think the aesthetics of like some robots that have been in movies and stuff like that. Um, and then, um, but they also brought in a couple of the teams I hadn't heard of. One guy um, who actually does like the best. Uh, he, he, I think he does. He's a, he's a contractor for um, the U.S. military. Like he makes a lot of the the very fast tanks and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Their company does. So they're, he's gonna he's bringing in to specialize just with the tank portion, with the treads and all that. And then so they're bringing different par- different specialized teams for certain parts of the robot. The Muldoon to shoot the dinosaurs that we mentioned before. Right. So that's, that's gonna shoot her. Exactly. <laughs> Clever girl. <laughs> um. This this actually made me think of something because I love. Um, they're watching football, by the way. <laughs> We've been very good about this so far. We haven't said a word, but he scored a touchdown, and that is. Well, there's a flag on the. Uh, yeah. He pushes him while he's in the it, air. It's both. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he catches it with one hand, and then, and then moves it to the other. DeAndre Hopkins is the best. I drafted him today in the fantasy football league I'm in. I know nice. with with the Four Eyed Radio Network. It's nice. a four-eyed radio network of Fantasy Football League. I don't Ooh. understand Fantasy Football. It's Dungeons and & Dragons for non-nerds. No, but there's so many little things. Oh, they're trying to say it was pass inter- offensive pass interference. <laughs> well, it'd be about who makes contact first. But, okay, so this... Anyway, is, enough football. Yeah, this is one thing that I, um... I really love mech stories. Yeah. Um, Big Gundam fan? <laughs> Um, yeah, I like Gundam, but w- one thing that w- one thing that I've demanded uh, from my anime or mech stories in general as I get older is a good reason for mechs to exist. Mm-hmm. Uh, best example, um, what well, tro- uh, not Tropic Thunder? What was the name of the mech <laughs> movie that came out really recently? Oh. I know what you're talking about. Uh, Pacific Rim. Pacific Rim. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're, doing a, they're doing a sequel of that, I believe. No reasons for mechs for for mechs to exist. No. No reason at all. Right. Um, Gundam, very, very loose idea that suggests why mechs should exist. 
Um, yeah, the only reason they really should exist is because they're fun for people. Exactly. <laughs> Entertainment. But there there are some stories that actually do a good job of explaining it. So what's your favorite story that adequately explains mechs? Well, I, there's a term. There's a term that, that automatically um, helps me with that, that amount of disbelief. That, Fan service. No, that is <laughs> no, that is required for me to, like, if they just use this one term, Mm-hmm. Then I'm like, all right, cool. I'll, I'll, I'll suspend my, my, my you know, disbelief for, for this particular episode or show, whatever it is. And that is vertical tanks. That's it. That one term, I'm like, all right, that, t- that sounds real. <laughs> I'll, I'll buy. I'll buy in. Why vertical tanks? Because it gives the idea, because a tank is a thing. It's a thing, a real thing that, that, that is a part of our military. Okay. A part of everybody's military. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a, it's a practical machine. Okay. Um, and I think all my, my mind, the way I, I, I sell it to myself is that, yeah, it's a tank and it's just taller. <clears throat> so something that uses a thousand times the resources. Well, the thing is, yeah. uh, when, I, when I think of a, a vertical tank also, I still think of treads. I think of just a, a, a vertical body attached to a, a, a strong base that's treads. That, okay. That are, are treads like that. That makes sense. Once you start standing them up, I just, I just, I continue the disbelief or uh, the suspension of disbelief. Just um, for no reason? Just for no reason at all. Um, and I do like when they're slower. I think that makes a lot more sense. Um, mm-hmm. When they're fast like Gundams, that almost, that's, that's almost supernatural the way they do it. Yeah. Um, but, um, well, but I do like, I did like, um, one, uh, uh, instance of tank, of uh, mechs that I do like was when they were in the um, Steel Battalion video game. I did like those because they felt substantial. They were heavy, they were slow, um, and they felt more like a what you call a vertical tank. Did they give a good reason for it? They didn't, no, they didn't, they didn't dive into it at all. Really? Yeah, they were just, this is it, go for it. And it felt, it felt like, you, like you would imagine a, a tank that stood up on two legs would, would be. Um, but there's no mythos that you uh, that you yourself prefer. I, the very I, militaristic one. Okay. Yeah. So this, for some reason, was the best idea for. Because the there, there, yeah, I felt like there was a, there was an element of believability to it. Okay. See, there t- there there are two that I really like. There's Robotech. Yes, you? I'm familiar with it and I know what it is, but I've never really watched it. Okay, so the thing about Robotech is um, they developed. Well, they they took the Robotech. <clears throat> they took the base Robotech that they got from aliens. They discovered a spaceship, and uh, they started building up a lot of stuff. But one of the reasons that they had to quickly come up with a big armored force is that the uh, the new alien force that was that came uh, and like destroyed most of Earth. Um, they're all giants. Like, they're way bigger than us. Okay. So now we have to have huge foot soldiers. Right. We have to match their size. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was pretty good. And also Knights of Sidonia. I'm not familiar with Knights of Sidonia. Knights of Sidonia is another uh, post-apocalyptic story. Um, and the thing about uh, uh, their whole thing is the uh, the massive enemies that they, uh, uh, that they have to fight, they can only be killed by one particular element that is impossible to synthesize... And they, they have a very limited amount of it. They've got like 17 of the... Uh, they, they have... Well, what they've done, so that they're not shooting this stuff out and losing it, is they've created lances okay. that are reusable. Okay. So the ships need to be able to... Carry the lances. A lance. Okay. Yeah. That's not, that's not too bad. No. Yeah. Also, the other thing is that um, they rarely walk. Okay. They're, uh, they're space fighters. Okay, I like that. That's cool. They have feet. See that that's that's one of the things that helps you with with that suspense of dis, suspense of disbelief is is if you put them in space, walking's not an issue. Mm-hmm. Which you know. actually they do a lot of really cool things um, in that show. For example, to uh, conserve on fuel and stuff like that, um, a large battalion will um, will create a ring and they'll all hold hands like this. <laughs> and they play Red Rover. Huh. Well, no, they're they're one they're one big ring, and so together they make this one big jet. Boom. Oh, okay. Yeah, and uh, smaller uh, smaller fire uh, fire teams will be in uh, will be in teams of three, and they'll still cross their hands over and hold hands, and then one guidance system takes them. It's, I, I I really enjoy that show. Nice. How, and, is it is there a lot of seasons to that? Uh, season two was just released on Netflix, and it is a Netflix original anime. Really? Yes. I heard there was one, and that's this must be it. It's nice to do, yeah. I'm going to watch that now. Yes. Because Netflix originals have never been bad to me. 
Knights of Sidonia is no exception. Awesome. Although there's a lot of really weird stuff that goes on. Yeah? Well, it's like we're... we're what? Uh, th- this is like 500 years after Earth is yeah. already gone. And um, we've had to we've had to do a lot of things to our population in order to make it in order to make this work. For example, most modern actually all modern humans. There's only one counterexample, the main character of the show, uh, but all modern humans actually photosynthesize. Okay. Um, and so there's a lot of like nasty characters that are like, yeah, if I win this competition, then you're gonna have to photosynthesize with me. Ooh. Well, you to, you're, you're naked. <laughs> nice. Um, but. Um, no, and uh, the 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 skin suit thing was weird. Okay, it's their it's their flight suit. In order to conserve, uh, uh, in order to uh, conserve uh, conserve water, the skin suit has a has a catheter. Ugh. Yeah, it's automatically put into you. Oh boy! And it was a really weird, like fan servicey thing because, like, you're you're in the you're in the women's locker room and they and there's like zipping up their skin suit, so you get a little cleavage shot. Very uh, awful. But um, like, and then uh, you and you know the catheter thing's gonna happen, and they're just sort of blushing and going, oh, oh, <laughs> and it's like that's not what happens when you get a catheter. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, uh, we will be cutting this one a little short. Are you kidding me? No. But is there anything you wanted to talk about before? We have a couple minutes. We can talk about any other subject you had. Michael B. Jordan's the new Chris Evans. And why do you say that? Because... He's going to be another uh, superhero. Okay, the thing... You know, the, actually, yes. Yes. Um, so, Michael B. Jordan was the Human Torch. It's in a right. Ba- in a bad movie. Yes. And now he's switching to a new comic book yep. character. Still Marvel. Uh, no, it's Dark Horse. I'm sorry. My bad. You're right. By Marvel, I meant not DC. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he's actually going to be in uh, Blood Brothers. Yes. It's a vampire flick. Uh, I had actually read about this. Um, and it's a, it's something I've ever heard of. A lot of, as a lot of Dark Horse comics are a little f- under the radar. Mm-hmm. Um, this is no exception. Uh, and this one, from what I read, was like it's, they're making it into like almost like a dark comedy buddy movie. Yeah, I mean the the comic. It's it's one of those comics that doesn't have any um, boundaries. Right. Like, it's like these characters are centuries old, nigh invulnerable. Let's do whatever we want. Right. Like they smoke opium with Genghis Khan, and like they have their own rock group in the seventies and stuff like that. There's no rules, and there's no established timeline. They fit in anywhere, can do anything, and so as a result, it, they just get to they get to put these characters in any situation they want, which is what. And on top of that, it's not a big franchise. And when it's not a big franchise, example, Watchmen, mm-hmm. um, they they get to do what they really wanted to do with the movie instead sure. of worrying about toy sales and sequels. Right. And so, yeah, this is just it. Hopefully, this this has the potential to be a zany romp where I think a lot of people would argue Fantastic Four never had a chance. Yeah. Especially in this market, and not being part of the Disney Marvel Cinematic Universe, where Which, all of the emphasis. Yeah, because and, and this is one thing that a little irks me just a little bit. I understand though why it is this way, but it really irks me. Mm-hmm. I, the real Civil War movie would be bigger than just a Captain America Civil War movie. It would be Civil War with Reed Richards in it, because um, he was actually kind of a big deal in it. Not mm-hmm. a huge deal, but he was a part of it. As was the X Men. As were uh, all these different characters, and it, I wanted that movie. And I think, but since we live in the age of reboots, I'm hoping someday we'll get the real Civil War movie that we really want. I think because uh, I think because um, Wolverine is such a big name all on his own, and actually, I've been pretty uh, I've been pretty happy with the past two X Men movies. Um, I think that I think that there's room for like Disney. Uh, 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 Disney and was it Fox uh, yeah. to be like, hey, can can you can you tell the can you tell the Wolverine story, please? Right, because he has the best story in all of Civil War. Yeah, it's perfect. Right. I love every minute of it. Tell me when he when he hunts down the dude. Yeah, when he gets Nitro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, so uh, one thing um, we don't mind pulling back the curtain every once in a while. We did have a bottled outro that we were using. 
I stopped using it in the last episode or two. Okay. Um, and the reason it was, I wanted to be more, like, to quote you, organic. Okay. And I think we just should should talk about, naturally, about the things that we want you guys to go check out. Okay. So, so, so go, um, please, check out our Patreon for one. That's number one. Um, where you can actually uh, get exclusive content and stuff from us uh, if I, with a minimum of $2 a month, which is nothing. Um, but we also will be doing a lot of different stuff with the Patreon, trying to get people to, to be... we got a lot of cool ideas, actually, that we're working uh, out that we hopefully will we'll do for our patrons. Uh, what else? Uh, YouTube? Uh, yes, our YouTube channel. We have just a crazy backlog of Master Chief stuff in the can. Right. So we're probably going to be doing regular re- uh, regular releases over the uh, over the next two months, and hopefully um, continuing on that idea in the future of doing more Let's Plays and visual content for you. That's going to come to you through the wa- uh, through the Warlocks channel on YouTube. And of course, if there's anything that we haven't been specific enough about as far as finding it. Check out uh, check out this podcast on our website, and you will always find links below. All right. Well, I think that's all the time we have. Yeah, I think it's time to say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Meow. <laughs> this has been another proud production of the Four Eyed Radio Network. You want to see more shows? Go check out www.fouridradio.com. You winkers.